Minecraft speedrunning is a highly entertaining, fast-paced and adrenaline-fueled attempt at completing Minecraft, which is killing the Ender Dragon, in the fastest time possible. It is competitive, and the top Minecraft speedrunners will often spend hours a day mastering the techniques and patterns which allow them to complete the game the quickest. You see, there are certain techniques and methods which speedrunners use which allow them to beat the game faster than should be possible. Minecraft speedrunning is very diverse in its categories, but today we're going to talk about the most popular and most competitive ones. But before we get into that, I should explain how a speedrun works, and then I'll tell you about the unique techniques and tricks speedrunners use to beat the game as fast as possible. So let me quickly explain the rules of speedrunning, and the two main distinctions between speedruns. There are general speedrun rules for Minecraft as a whole, which is first of all, the speedrun has to be on Minecraft Java Edition, so sorry Bedrock players, but you guys aren't allowed in the main category. The run must also be done on survival or hardcore mode, and the difficulty cannot be peaceful, but the speedrunner is allowed to choose between the three other difficulties, easy, normal and hard. They however cannot switch the difficulty once they begin the speedrun. You cannot use command or open to land obviously, and the world type must be default, no super flat or amplified. Now as for rules about the recording of the speedrun itself, you have to be recording the whole run for it to count, and you have to show specific things such as the world being generated and loading screens for when you go to the nether etc. An in-game timer must be used to time the run, which will account for the differences in loading speeds between computers, and resource packs are allowed as long as they don't give an advantage, and the same goes for mods, so that means mods like Optifine are allowed. Those are the basic rules, there are quite a few more which get quite detailed, as well as category specific rules, but I'm not going to mention all of them, as it would take quite a while. One more thing you should know about speedrunning, is that there are two general categories for all speedruns, not just Minecraft, called Any% percent and Any% percent Glitchless. Any% percent means you are able to use bugs, exploits and glitches within your speedrun, which can lead to significantly faster times. An example of this would be duplicating items in a Minecraft speedrun. Any% percent glitchless, however, is the opposite, meaning you can't use any glitches or exploits, and you have to do it legit. Alright, so now I've taught you the basics of speedrunning, let's talk about the main categories within Minecraft speedrunning. Both Any% percent and Any% percent glitchless have the same four categories, which are Set Seed Pre 1.9, Set Seed 1.9+, Random Seed Pre 1.9, and Random Seed 1.9+. Set seed speedruns are where a specific seed is used every time, and this seed has been optimized for the speedrun. This means they can learn where all the important things are, such as ores, villages, and even the stronghold. And when I say the seed is optimized, I mean that certain essential features for the speedrun are easily accessible, such as the stronghold, which is really close, and also has most of its eyes of ender in it, and the player also knows where all the ores are and can dig straight to them, or structures such as desert temples and villages with valuable items are nearby. Set seed speedruns are all about memorization and perfecting specific techniques, as the speedrunner knows where everything is, he just has to get there as fast as possible. Now random seed speedruns are a bit more interesting in my opinion. Instead of the speedrunner using a specific seed, they generate a random world every time, meaning they have to adapt to the situation and find what they need. Now one more difference is pre and post 1.9. Minecraft 1.9 featured lots of game changing elements such as a change to the combat mechanics, the ender dragon fight was changed slightly, and new items such as shields were introduced. In even later versions of the game, key structures such as villages were changed as well. So basically, there are so many differences between post 1.9 versions of the game and pre 1.9 versions that they had to split into different categories. Alright, so now that we've established the main categories and rules, let me show you how these speedruns work. Let's talk about pre 1.9 set seeds first, within the any% percent glitchless category, meaning no bugs or exploits. The record is currently held by The Sizzler with a time of 4 minutes and 48 seconds. In his run, he enters a desert temple, where he only opens two of the chests out of the four, knowing that he only needs the items from those two. He then runs to a village right next to the desert temple, where he crafts a golden axe, which actually destroys blocks faster than a diamond one, and also destroys the bookshelves in the village. He then finds a cleric villager to trade with for a single eye of ender. He then makes a small error, accidentally throwing his single eye of ender, as you see, since it's a set seed, the runners know exactly where the stronghold is, and they don't need to throw Eyes of Ender to find one. He digs down to the stronghold, finds the end portal almost instantly, and puts a single Eye of Ender into the frame to activate it. You may have noticed that out of the 12 end portal frames, 11 already had Eyes of Ender, and this is incredibly rare. Specifically, it's a 0.0000, you get the point, chance. Speedrunning seeds are specifically selected on the basis that the end portal frame already contains most of the eyes of Ender. 
Anyways, he heads to the end and kills the dragon by destroying the end crystals when it gets close enough. For the same category, but for 1.9+, plus, the record is held by Ontricus at a time of 4 minutes and 43 seconds. He starts by gathering some wood, and then digging down intentionally straight into a buried treasure, which contains lots of good items. Making some gold tools, he finds some flint and heads to a nearby desert village where he collects all the village's beds and 10 obsidian to make another portal. However, he does not use that obsidian to make a portal yet, instead using the water and lava technique to make a portal and enter the nether, as you can see here. Once in the nether, he tunnels straight to a fortress and builds a new portal, which takes him to a specific location in the overworld where he is able to enter a cave and dig down into a stronghold which already has all 12 eyes of ender in the frame. He kills the dragon using bed explosions, as similar to the nether, you cannot sleep in the end and if you try to, the bed blows up doing massive damage which can be used to kill the dragon. Now, onto set seed any percent. So this time, it's still a set seed, but the speedrunners are allowed to use bugs and exploits. This is where it gets interesting. The record for set seed any percent pre 1.9 is held by the reaper underscore hk with an in-game time of 3 minutes and 44 seconds. Because of all the glitches and tricks involved in these type of speedruns, the time is mainly measured by in-game time, so time spent when the game isn't opened doesn't count. He starts in a village where he opens a chest full of some useful loot. He then drops the items, save and quits the world, goes back in, and just as he picks up the items, he crashes the game, which rolls the game back a bit, duplicating the items. Once he has duplicated enough items, he gets some more things such as flint and emeralds, and continues to dupe once more. He then repeatedly crashes his game once more in order to change the profession of a villager into one which can trade him a bow and arrow. Heading to the end, he destroys the end crystals with a bow and arrow and kills the dragon with beds. Now, for the fastest time out of any of the set seeds, the record for any percent set seed 1.9 plus is held by Circuit at an astounding 1 minute and 55 seconds of in-game time on version 1.12.2. He begins by gathering some items from the village chest and then using a similar technique to duplicate obsidian. He enters the nether, finds a nether fortress and then intentionally crashes his game using Alt 4 to change the mob spawns at the fortress. This goes on for quite a while until he finds the right mob spawns. He then tries to kill the mobs and relogs whenever he's taking damage, as relogging gives you 3 seconds of invincibility and some timers and properties of mobs are reset. Remember, for this type of speedrun, time spent closing the game and on the pause when he doesn't count. Now going into the stronghold, he duplicates some more items, of which can be useful for crafting an end crystal. Now this is the most interesting part of the run. In your versions of the game, when you enter the end, there is a 0.25 second window, where if you place an end crystal, it will prevent the ender dragon from spawning, and spawn the portal to leave the end. Alright, now let's move on to random seed speedruns which is one of the most competitive speedrun categories for Minecraft. First of all, any percent glitchless pre 1.9, which is held by Illumina at 23 minutes and 53 seconds. Now because these runs can vary in what happens due to the randomness of the seed, I'm mainly going to tell you about the main strategies which are used in this type of speedrun. So first of all, Illumina gathers some basic materials and sets some cows on fire for food. He then heads out into the desert to look for a desert temple or a lava pit which he can make another portal out of. Deserts are really important for these speedruns, as they not only contain valuable loot and structures and easily accessible lava pits, but they also spawn the most mobs at night. In the nether, he finds a fortress and proceeds to a blaze spawner to collect blaze rods. Back in the overworld, he starts a common speedrun technique of getting enderpels. Basically, he goes to a desert and towers up really high in the sky, placing a bed at the top and sleeping. This sets a spawn point at the top of the tower, and then he can jump down and look for endermen. If he sees any, he looks at them so they aggro him, and then he kills them, and if not, he stores his items in a chest and jumps in lava, and then he respawns at the top of the tower, and what this does is reset mob spawns. That means when he respawns at the top, new mobs will spawn everywhere, and he can repeat this process until he has got enough ender pearls. He then can craft eyes of ender and locate a stronghold. Now, the method used to locate the stronghold is another common speedrun tactic, which is called triangulation. Triangulation basically allows you to line up two eyes or ender throws so that you can roughly estimate where they intersect, which is where the stronghold should be. This is a pretty difficult technique and takes quite a lot of time to master. Once in the stronghold, he shoots the end crystals and arrow to destroy them, and kills the dragon, once again using the bed method. Now, for random seed any percent glitchless for 1.9+, the record is held by a real Benex with a time of 22 minutes and 23 seconds. The method for this run is quite different for obtaining enderpearls. 
The run starts off well, and he enters a desert temple to get some loot as well as the 9 TNT, which will be important later. He finds a village and goes to the nether to get blaze rods, and upon returning to the overworld, he begins using a new method to obtain the tender pearls. In Minecraft version 1.14.4, when TNT blows up blocks, all the blocks will be dropped, as in prior versions of the game, not all blocks dropped when destroyed, some were lost. He uses this to blow up a bunch of village houses in order to obtain a large amount of wood, which he uses to make sticks. With the sticks, he can trade with a cleric villager for enderpearls. He then also used the triangulation method to find a stronghold, he enters it and kills the dragon with beds. Any percent random seed for pre 1.9 is also held by Illumina, with an in-game time of 7 minutes and 51 seconds. The technique for this run is to keep creating a new world until you spawn into one with a village nearby. Once he spawns into one with a village, he gets some items and uses the same method to duplicate them a few times. Once he has duplicated them enough, he trades with a villager to get a bow and arrow as well as plenty of eyes of ender and enough wool to make a decent amount of beds. He then finds the stronghold once again through triangulation and also once again he slays the dragon with beds. Now finally, any percent random seed for 1.9 plus is actually not a very popular category with only 4 recorded speedruns. The record is held by Agar Other with an in-game time of 23 minutes and 23 seconds. The run is very similar to the pre 1.9 run where he finds a village and dupes important items, but then he also heads to a stronghold without using triangulation, but he uses the same technique to skip the dragon fight by placing an end crystal. Considering how little runs are of this category, I might even attempt it. Okay, so finally, I want to tell you about some of the other types of Minecraft speedruns which aren't that popular or they take significantly longer. First of all, there's all achievement, which means getting every achievement in the game, which also has a bunch of subcategories for it. These speedruns can take up to 2 hours long, with the fastest time being about 42 minutes. There is also all advancements, which is the same thing, but for newer versions of the game. But the hilarious thing is that there are virtually no attempts, and one of the world records is at 38 hours, with the guy doing the run taking multiple breaks throughout. There are also co-op speedruns and getting all 6 enchanted apples as well as other smaller speedruns such as crafting all sorts. There are probably hundreds of types of Minecraft speedruns because the game is just so diverse. So Minecraft speedrunning has a diverse array of categories with multiple techniques and tricks used for runs. The speedruns are very competitive and there are always new records being broken every few months or even weeks. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and comment which speedrun you enjoyed the most. Thank you so much for watching.